The Insurance Brokers Podcast is brought to you by Sarah Myerscoff of Boston Tullis. Welcome to the Insurance Brokers Podcast with your host, Sarah Myerscoff. This business podcast is for ambitious brokers determined to grow their business. Our guests are highly experienced industry experts and innovators. This is the place to leverage their success, learn how to break through barriers to growth, and discover a community of support and ideas whilst growing your business. Good afternoon, Alan. Thank you so much for joining me on the Insurance Brokers Podcast. I'm really excited to um, really to hear what you've got to say uh, about the incredible product that you guys are working on at the moment and the background to it, because I think it's got a huge relevance to uh, sort of tradesmen uh, in, in the insurance uh, industry. So, um, Alan, do you want to give us a bit of background about who you are and, and what we're talking about today? Hi, Sarah. Thank, thanks for having me on. Um, Tool Watch app, it's a national database that works with the and the insurance company. To give you a little background information, um, October 2018, I had my van broken into. I'm a builder by trade. And they stole eight and a half thousand pounds worth of tools. So I phoned up the police and had a 40 minute conversation with them regarding, can you spell your surname? Can you spell your street? What was stolen? Do you have the serial numbers? Do you have the makes? So after 40 minutes, I hung up. The very next morning, eight o'clock, I got an email to say the case was closed. Um, once I hung up from the, the police, I phoned the insurance company. Same 40 minute conversation. Spell your name, spell your address, what was stolen? And I thought, because my tools had, had grown my tool base over years, I didn't have the serial numbers. I didn't have, for some of them, I didn't have the receipts. And the information I could give was really pretty poor. So I thought there must be somewhere online, like a housekeeping tool that you could take photographs, put your serial numbers in, that you would have it. And there wasn't. So I started pen to paper, trying to design something for myself. Um, I talked to other people about it, um, decided to try to build this tool watch um, housekeeping item. I talked to a lot of the police at the time about my tool theft and how angry I was. And you know, they were saying to me that they have no information to go on. They can stop people. They don't, they know they're, they're dodgy, but they can't prove they've stolen tools. They have warehouses full of stolen tools that they don't know who owns them, can't reunite them with their owners. Um, each police force works differently. So we've got 43 police forces that all work individual. So if I stole something in Hertfordshire, three and a half miles down the road and in Bedfordshire, I could be stopped with a whole lot of stolen stuff. They would have no, they would have no rec they would have no information on that theft. So I would just drive past, they couldn't stop me. Um, so I designed two watch then, I, two watch kept building on me and I designed it that the tradesperson would subscribe to tool watch. They would enter in photographs of their tool, make, model, serial number. They also had the opportunity to upload receipts for their tools. So that if, to make a central database that if the police found a tool, that they could search through the database and say, oh, this belongs to Alan. The system would email me to say that, Alan, your tool has been found by Manchester police. The thing with the thefts is they're stealing from one place, they're crossing the county border into another place where they can sell them and nobody can nobody can prove they're stolen. So I designed tool watch that it could, if I was, if I was the victim of tool theft, I would just go on my web-based app click on the pictures that were stolen. The system would enter in the place I was at the time. If I caught a picture of the van driving away or if I had CCTV, I could upload that. And once I click report, that would go to the nearest police station. So if I was working in London tomorrow and I didn't know what borough I was in, then the system would pick the, the borough that I'm in, send it to the police, email me to say it's been sent to this certain police station here. 
the good thing about it is the police side they would receive your report and if it happened just the way the the controller would look at it and go this just happened on london street um click a button all that information would go out to the traffic police to be watching out for this vehicle that was involved in two theft giving them an opportunity to catch people in real time um so you can report through the app to the police you don't need the 40 minute conversation um, if the police find it, the system notified me to say it's found. Then I looked at the insurance side and it was like, my God, that was another 40 minutes wasted. Because for me, the insurance people did everything they could not to do it. And their last answer to me was, how do we know you didn't move your tools from one van to another? I couldn't prove it. That was their get out of jail card. Wow. So I have the, the report now that you can save it as a PDF. So you can save it as a PDF. It saves the photographs of the tool, how much they're worth, the receipts, where it happened, crime reference number. That goes to your insurance company. So it cuts out the to and fro with the insurance company. Have you got this? Answering questions. They have all the information there. Um, the thing with the police, the back end for the police is that places that are renowned for stolen tools car boot sales. The police can walk down a car boot sale, enter a make and model, or make and serial number. And once they do that and click check, instantly they get it searches through the database and goes back to them. Hey, this tool is stolen. A profile picture of me, the owner, my contact details, saying that this tool was stolen from Alan in Harpenden. Um, once the police officer clicks found the system then will email me to tell me it's been found here but it gives the police the opportunity to catch the thief red-handed catch somebody dealing in stolen goods so have you got buy-in from all 43 police boroughs if that's the right word um yes we what we had to do was to work with the police we have to be secure by design the secure by design is like the body that checks that this company is legit, it's not dodgy. So to achieve that, we've had to go through British standards and get kite marked to prove that all your information is stored and protected and it can't be got at by hackers and things like that. So at the moment, the Met are using the system mm -hmm. and all the rest of the police forces are, we can't wait for this, we just need the trades people to have their tools on there so it's something that we can actually use. And it strikes me, and I know you've had these conversations, is that this is an absolutely incredible value add benefit to a tradesman insurance policy. And if we could get to that position, then the number of tradesmen using this product is actually what's gonna make it really, really uh, useful. Yeah, if, if you think about it, the police, you know, one of the biggest angers that I had was the police didn't do anything. And everybody I talked to who's been a victim said the police don't do anything. But the police haven't got the facility to do anything. And unless us as tradespeople give them the tool, take our tools, we're still going to be in the same situation every year on year. It's going up. The last year, it was every 20 minutes a van was broken into. Now it's every 16 minutes. Jeez. We can put locks on the vans, we can put alarms in the vans, we can park in the well-lit areas, as everybody tells us to. They're still breaking in. you know. And the, the latest fad now is they're peeling the top of the vans back like a tin of beans. That van is a total write-off. You know, last year alone, tool theft cost the tradespeople as an industry, the construction industry, 267 million pounds. Now that's tool theft, that's time off work because you've got no tools, time off work to get your van fixed, but mm. £267 million pound has been taken out of our pockets. Tradesmen will buy drills from £80 pound to £150. Pound. Somebody will buy that, sell it at a car boot sale for £30. Pound. No. Yeah. The system's also set up that if you were to be selling tools, so you decided I'm getting out of the game, I want to sell my tools. 
I could come along, agree a price with you, but I could check the serial numbers against the database and say, yep, yeah, these tools are safe or these tools are stolen. If they're safe, I can say, right, here's your money. What you would do is you as a user would just like transfer, enter my membership number, and all the information, the photographs, the serial numbers will go directly from your system to my profile. But it cuts down how long it takes you know, and having to enter more tools. Now, we have scaled down how you um, register a tool. You do it on your mobile phone, you add the serial number, make, model, then the, the app prompts you to take a photograph of it. So it will open up your camera, you take a picture of your tool, click use the, use the photo and click register. That tool's done. You only have to do it the once. Mm. You know, and hopefully, you don't have to worry about tool to watch out then. It's only there that if you buy a new tool, you can add it on to it. But hopefully, you won't get you won't get robbed, so you won't mm. have to go into the app to. And it's a, a web-based app, isn't it, rather than a sort of Apple app or Android yes. app? Yes, you, you won't you won't be able to download uh, to watch app. Um, reason being. To work with the police, they have secure servers. They're not allowed to download things. And essentially, they're not allowed to download, police officers aren't allowed to download onto the police force phones. We've designed it as a web-based app that as long as you've got internet access, they can use their system. And it looks exactly like an app, but it just needs internet. And one of the good things that we found out after the fact was that if I if I leave my phone in my van, and they rob my tools and my phone, I've no I've no access to that app. Whereas I can borrow my workmate's phone and say, "Lend me your phone, go into the app, through the internet, and report the theft." Absolutely. Now, Alan, tell me about because this is gaining some traction in the House of Commons, isn't it? So tell me about your um, sort of uh, uh, your wave into politics with this and what's happened in the House of Commons and, and, and those supporters you've got? Well, from, from talking to a lot of the police sergeants and people like that, uh, one of our local MPs came to us and said, I want to meet with you. This is interesting. He mentioned it in questions in Parliament to Kit Malthouse. Kit thought it was a great idea. And since that, we've had a few Zoom meetings with him regarding the idea of making it compulsory that, or making insurance companies compulsory that they get us some kind of database that we can register to them. This day and age, you know, we all love our pets. We're chipping dogs, chipping cats, insurance for dogs, insurance for cats, which is all well and good. But the two, our tools are, are our livelihood, yet we're not doing anything about it, we're putting them in the van, we're going to bed, locking the van, you're a noise, you're out of bed, hoping and praying that you go down in the morning, your tools are there, you can go to work. Mm. So, the Kit Malthouse is, who's the head of the policing, he's very interested in tool watch and making it that the whole world, the whole country knows that it's here, that it's available. Mm. I think it's incredible. And actually, this idea is already expanding, isn't it? Out, out from tools. It is. Um, you know, when when I designed it, <laughs> put a look, really, um, you know, talking to other people who are sales reps, things like that. The tools of their trade might be their mobile phone, their laptop. Each have a serial number. Each has a make. So we could go on the system. Um, the police are very interested in rolling it out to, to home insurance because everything this day and age has a serial number. Everything has, so they want to have it that it's the one stop shop that anything that's found can be reunited with the owner. And it, it gives, you know, at the moment we see people getting stopped, man loads of stuff taken off them or till theft, and then the case doesn't go to court, or the case, he gets a slap on the wrist and he's out. Because they have no real way of proving it. 
you know, and that's the problem with the police. The reason why we put a value on the tools when we register them is, if it is a £2,000 theft, it comes with a maximum penalty of this. If it's a 5000 the penalty goes up more and more and more. So for the police, they want to know, <laughs> Alan lost £5,000 worth of tools, or Alan lost £8,000 worth of tools. We can get this guy, we've caught him red-handed, we have the proof that we can take this guy and we will hopefully get a prosecution. I think it's incredible. How did you, I mean, are you technical or have you got uh, resources in to do it, to, to build the app? I, as I said, I'm a, I'm a builder by trade. Um, the ideas, adding things on. What I did was I employed somebody to come on board with me to design it, or not to design it, to make what I wanted. Yeah. You know? And it's got to the stage now where it's fully supporting itself. You know, it's hosted by Amazon secure servers. Everything that I wanted to do, or everything I think that I can add to it, is done. So it's there. You know, the manual side of things is if you subscribe to Toolwatch, then I need to put your welcome pack together. You know, the welcome pack is keyring, key, a notepad. But more importantly, it's the sticker for your van. It's a sticker that says, these tools are protected by Toolwatch, um, the Toolwatch database. Now that's not gonna stop somebody breaking into your van, but if he's coming down your street at three o'clock in the morning, and he says, ah, oh, these tools are protected. If I get stopped with these tools, I'll check the database at the clock. If the guy down around the corner doesn't have a sticker, so I'll go and do him. You know, it, it sounds real bad, I'm pushing it down the street, but every builder would rather somebody else was done and feel sorry for them rather than the crushing thought, how do I, how do I build myself up again? But also, what you are giving back is an element of control over that, which at the moment is out of control. You've got no control over whether you are going to be the next victim of this. And like you say, it massively affects livelihood. So what you've built gives an element of control back to tradesmen to, you know, for, for a very uh, reasonable cost. And you've, you've got people now buying into this, haven't you? Which is incredible. It can, it's, yeah. I'm blown away by what you've done. I think it's, there are not many people out there that have an experience that, that you have and then go on a proactive journey to go, okay, this will not happen again and I'm going to help the wider market as well. So I think it's really incredible what you've done and I can only see onwards and upwards for it. You know, it, it, it is something great. I'm, I think it's amazing. Every insurance company, every tradesperson I talk to thinks, yeah, this is amazing. You know, it is the fight that the police won't do anything, but we have got to give them the tools. We can't sit back and go, oh, they won't do anything, so why will I do anything? Mm. It's not going to work, you know, and I just want to see it as success and it changing it. It is no more of a prevention tool than anything else. You know, they're not going to steal our tools if they cannot sell our tools. And there's no point in them breaking into my van and taking the tools because we can't sell them at a car boot sale, we can't sell them in this shop, we can't go around the pubs and sell them. You know, the tradespeople all have to stand together and say, right, enough's enough, let's, let's all band together, let's do something. You know, what I've designed is something like a DVLA for tools. And anything found, as long as it's on the system, it can be protected. Absolutely incredible. And to uh, everybody listening, if you are uh, an insurer or a broker and would like to have a conversation with Alan about this and how he might be able to uh, uh, offer a solution to you and your products related to the tradesmen and other industries, uh, then I will make sure that Alan's contact details are in the show notes of this episode. So please don't hesitate to get in touch. Alan, thank you so much for telling us your story and also for the sort of inspirational, uh, proactive journey that you've gone on in the last couple of years. And I, um, you know, there's a silver lining to most clouds and you suffered not, not a very nice loss in 2018, but hopefully the journey you've come on from then is, is pretty damn incredible. So congratulations. Thank you very much, Sarah. I really appreciate your time. 
Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you have enjoyed what you have heard, have any questions or feedback, please leave us a review and we will be sure to get back to you. If you would like further information on how Boston Tullis Group can support your business, or if you would like to join us on an episode, please do not hesitate to contact us.